We attach ourselves to people that make us feel warm and welcomed. It helps build community and it helps our survival. If you have untreated trauma, it affects you on a DNA level. You can pass that onto your kids. So it's well worth getting your trauma sorted out. And I do my best to see that silver lining within every experience. The solution should be simple, but it's not because we're talking about culture change, talking about changing behaviours, we're talking about challenging identities. Hey guys, and welcome back to the Mind Mate podcast. Uh, this is going to be a solo cast today. It's going to be another episode uh, from topics from counselling clients. And I'm enjoying the uh, process here with these because it seems like topics uh, kind of come into the sessions in waves and lots of them, similar ones come up at the same time. And, you know, maybe that's probably a result of the times or something that I'm bringing or ideas, you know, that, um, that are coming into people's lives. But yeah, I'm always interested in kind of the themes of the sessions. And this podcast is all about expectations. And, um, you know, I believe expectations come from all different sorts of places, um, not the least the society and the culture that we live in, um, but our upbringing and the ideas we have about who we should be, who we need to be, who we want to be. There are pros and cons to expectations, but awareness is everything. And I think you want to find a therapist who isn't trying to fix you because no one should see you as a broken entity. They should see you as someone who isn't sure how to take the next step, isn't sure in what direction, where they should be taking the next step on the path that they're creating, they're being you, if that is you. And um, what's going to help you create that path that uh, you enjoy walking, you know, the fulfilling process of life is awareness, ideas around your options. Expectations is one of these um, ideas from an abstract standpoint because if you're not sure um, who you need to be, if you're not sure why you keep thinking that every tiny mistake is a, is a failure, um, you're never going to get anywhere. You're going to feel like there's no point to even trying. Um, there's different ideas when it comes to expectations as well. There's if I make one mistake, I'm a terrible person. Um, I should be happy with who I am. Um, I should be happy with who I'm becoming, whatever it is. And uh, this, this this podcast is all about expectations to, to give you the awareness that you might need to help you take that next step in life, um, to perhaps recognize that taking that step isn't what you need right now, just to introspect and sit and reflect is what you need right now. But Hopefully this, um, this podcast illuminates a lot of these um, psychological ideas for you. The first thing I want to talk about when it comes to expectations is the benevolent and the, the, the beneficial side of expectations. So what are expectations? Expectations are, I believe that I need to work um, to a certain level, adhere to a certain um, discipline or adhere to a certain idea about who I need to be. And those are good ideas because expectations propel us forward so that we continue to self-transcend. We continue to become more of who we could be, um, try to fulfill our potential, reach and achieve our goals. You absolutely need goals and ideals in life because not only from a neurochemical standpoint, I mean, that's the stuff that actually gives you the positive emotion that we all are ultimately seeking in life, the dopamine and the serotonin, you know, the satiation, the satisfaction, the excitement and the reward, because dopamine isn't in and of itself um, satisfying. It's the idea that that whatever I'm chasing is going to be satisfying. That's why we move forwards. You know, when we're out in the, in, in the wild as primitive chimps, being hungry and thinking about lovely food and being out there on the hunt, you know, or, you know, foraging for, for berries and veggies and things. That's exciting. That's what dopamine does. It, it makes us want to chase. And then when we eat food, well, then we're satisfied. But if we were satisfied all the time, we wouldn't go out there and hunt again. So we'd starve. But um, <laughs> if we were, if we were chasing all the time, we wouldn't actually get to eat as well. So you need kind of both. And this is where I think expectations come in, you know, now that we can talk and now that we're far more cognizant and aware, um, even though we're still chimps, 
dopamine is I could be a better person or I could achieve what that goal or I, you know, I, I could be better if A, B, and C. Achieving that goal is, is the serotonin. It's I got there. You know, you need both. You need to celebrate the wins. And you also need to constantly be looking forward so that you can continually become. That's positive emotion in a nutshell. So the, the beneficial side of expectations is they give you an idea of who you could be. Now, we all must have a vision for our lives. And this is one of the reasons why I created the Finding Mission course is to help people formulate their own visions for themselves with frameworks, with where you are nows and where you could be and, and everything in between and all the journals and the content are for that. Without those expectations, those wonderful aspects of expectations, you won't ever achieve and you'll feel potentially like a failure. And it sucks to admit that, but we all have that sense of like we could be doing something with our lives. And it's so important to own that, you know. The negative side of expectations is they, as soon as you write them down or as soon as you say them to someone, they immediately become a judge because you see how far away you are from being that person that is your ideal self in six months, in a year, in 10 years. So there's this constant tension in between who we are and who we could be. Now, Viktor Frankl, who wrote Man's Search for Meaning, he wrote a ton of other books as well, which I also recommend. I think they're brilliant. Man's Search for Meaning is obviously fantastic, but I can't, the soul cry for help. I'm going to post this down because I can't remember the name that the souls cry for help or someone will be able to remember this. Um, he wrote this book and he spoke about how there's this thing called paradoxical intention and how we should lean into what we're afraid of. But he was just a brilliant psychiatrist in general, but in man's search for meaning, he wrote about how the tension between where we are and where we could be is actually healthy. It's what gives us meaning. It's what gives us a purpose for our lives. And without that tension, there's no path. We always need a path. The path is where we are and where it could be. That's every story from a mythical perspective. It's there's a character who's somewhere, they go out there, they get into this crazy place. And then what they learn from it when they come back is everything they bring back to the community. This is obviously the hero's journey in a nutshell, but it's a wonderful idea and representation of how we can all be the heroes of our own lives. And it's recognizing where we are, recognizing where we could be and mediating the two with our conscious and purposeful actions. So the expectations, you've got that ideal self. As soon as you write that down, it becomes a judge because it's like, oh my God, look how far away I am from who I could be. If you create unreasonable and unfair expectations, you will almost by definition feel like a failure because the ideal self that you have envisioned is impossibly challenging and almost futile to even imagine becoming. So you might ask, why did I create this, this ideal self if I know I could fail? Well, oftentimes when these are subconscious drivers, it's important to look back into our past selves and our childhood perhaps or our adolescence when we were so concerned with the opinions of other people. You know, we actually become sociocentric in our adolescence because we need to be much more aware at that time when our brains are evolving and when, when we're developing, we need to become much more aware of what our crowds and our peers think so that we can understand how to exist within a community because we're not just individuals. We are part of something greater and so that something greater is the society or the community or whatever it is. So that's an important part, but coming out of that and becoming an individual is learning how to embrace your own authenticity within a community. And isn't it wonderful that our communities now, as times progress, are actually becoming much more accepting of individuality and authenticity. But when we look back into our past selves, look back into our upbringings, wherever it is, we might have learnt that there's no such thing as getting validation without working ridiculously. You know, if our parents were 
the type of people who would only provide us with attention and love and care uh, if we worked really hard, if we performed a certain way, if we behaved a certain way, what we might start seeing is that aspects of ourselves became more exaggerated because like all human beings, we want to be loved and other aspects of our personality became suppressed because we recognized that those didn't actually lead to any type of validation or love. And what you get is this kind of wonky half self that's still in adulthood chasing where it thinks it will be most loved. And if your expectations are far too high, and this is perhaps the first time you've thought about your expectations, you might have a think of, okay, as a child, was I only loved or was I loved conditionally based upon my working performance or my sporting performance or how well I acted or how well I sung or how many things I did in a day or how many jokes I cracked or how much food I ate or whatever it was. And does any of that now contribute to the expectations I place on myself? Are those fair? Do I constantly feel like a failure because I'm never meeting the expectations that are actually subconsciously the expectations of my parents, the people from my upbringing, my friends at high school, which I haven't seen in 25 years. <laughs> All these ideas come into it. So when you first write down your goals, because goals can be expectations. In fact, goals are expectations because you wouldn't write them if you didn't think that A, you could achieve them or B, that they're going to bring some sense of positive emotion to you. Why are you wanting to achieve those goals? What does that wanting want? You know, do you feel like you'll finally be worthy enough if you achieve A, B, and C? So that's just a couple of ideas when it comes to expectations, okay? Your point A is comfortable, but it's unfulfilling. Your point B is terrifying, but becoming that person is very, very purpose-driven and fulfilling, and it, but it's uncomfortable because it acts as a judge based upon who you are now. But if you can write realistic goals, if it, as a client said today, if you can set the bar or set yourself up for a fucking win, that's what he said. <laughs> it's a great idea. Excuse me. You will feel like there's progress to be found. And psychologist Mahali Chikset Mahali, he said that the flow state is found in that fine line between something that's too challenging and not challenging enough, where progress is being seen. It's Vygotsky was a Russian psychologist. He called it the zone of proximal development. Whatever you want to call it, constantly applying resistance and then adapting to that resistance is going to be ultimately how you feel fulfilled in life. And to me, when I'm working with people, it's all about creating a vision, a vision for your life. That's the idea we want here. So a couple of things with expectations. You've got your point A, you've got your point B, judgmental, I've got nothing if I don't have it. The other side to it is how do I know if my expectations I have are authentic? So we only, we, we mentioned one aspect of it and that was looking back into a past, into our past to have a think about whether or not um, our beliefs and opinions are our own or whether they were actually placed into us by people who perhaps held more power over us at the time. Um, one way as well that you can have a think about where those expectations come from is, are you meeting them? Are you always failing? If you make one mistake, are you a failure? Are you a bad person? Are you achieving every single goal you set out for? And do you have way too much spare time? Think of it like bowling a bowling ball down an alley. And obviously walking on that path is the bowl continue to can you know continuing to roll the close the further it rolls the further you get towards hitting the eight pins and then you know achieving everything you could possibly imagine in the world the point a and the point b are the side they're the bumpers on either side so that ball's going to go far to the too far to the left if you have no goals at all if you're just sitting around it'll just go off the lane because you know you're not doing anything similarly or alternatively if the expectations you place on yourself are far too high, unrealistic, not even yours, it's going to go far to the right, far too far to the right, and you're never going to get anywhere and you're not going to hit those eight pins. So constantly use these ideas as a way to kind of sit back and reflect and think about 
why it's so hard for you to just maintain this linear path, okay? So these are just a couple of things I wanted to mention. As I said, expectations are coming up a lot uh, with clients at the moment, and um, it's always great to bring what's coming up to the broader community because if it's coming up a lot in counseling sessions, it might be that this is actually coming up with everyone. And expectations are difficult for us at the moment because we live in a world where we are have access to each other like never before. And obviously I'm pumped up about that because I wouldn't have a podcast um, without that kind of technology. But if you're constantly comparing yourself all the time to other people, you're seeing their best selves all the time. You're uh, in tune with who you are right now and you're going to feel inadequate or unworthy. Now, there are things you can do. You can render and tailor your social media profiles and the people you follow um, so that it's much more conducive to how you see the world. Maybe you love expectations. This is another thing, right? Michael Jordan, if you saw the docuseries um, of Michael Jordan on Netflix, his expectations were unrelenting. You know, he was arrogant. He was a bit of a dickhead. Uh, he was always training. He was OCD about his, his training and his food and everything, but he was the greatest basketballer, perhaps the greatest sportsman of all time. So none of what I'm saying here is right or wrong, but it must be applied to your life. If you want to be the greatest basketball player of all time, your expectations need to be unforgiving. You know, it's not enough just to be okay with where you are. You are going to need something pulling you out of bed at 4 a.m. as an example, all day, every day, training four times a day, training five times a day, eating the right foods, never going out, never socializing, because there are people out there who train like that. And if you need to be better than them, well, your expectations need to be ridiculous in comparison to someone that is happy to sit on a beach all day, every day and drink a margarita. My job as a counselor is to help you live the life you want. I don't have the answers for you, but what I can provide is awareness for you and understanding how your expectations either help your life or hinder your life, create obstacles, is going to be one of the keys that allow you to create that vision and forge a path, which is ultimately all I really care about. You know, I want you to be walking on that path that you're creating so that you can back, look back on your life and go, damn, I'm happy with the painting that I drew, which was my life. So expectations, guys, I hope that helps. Um, if you have any questions about this, uh, you can just send me a, a message on Instagram or you can email me as well. And um, um, I, I look forward to hearing from you. If you want to talk about counseling, um, you can book in a time uh, for a discovery call where we get a chance to have a conversation to see if we're the right fit for each other because I also want you to be really selfish. And if I'm not the right person for you, the right counselor, then you need to go and find someone else who um, serves what you need. And uh, with that, that is the end of the episode. So I'm going to keep bringing some solo casts to you guys. These are topics from counseling clients and um, hopefully they, they, uh, they resonate. Speak to you next week. Bye.